In this video, we'll cover the steps needed to build a basic custom action in Integration Hub. For this example, we'll create a custom action to get the IP geo information that we did via an outbound REST message in an earlier video. Now, as with most integrations, we'll get started with the vendor's documentation. We can see the base URL, path parameters, and query parameters available to us. Let's copy that base URL. Next, we'll create a new app in ServiceNow. There are a few places we could do this from, but for now, let's start in System Applications Studio. We'll create a new application. We'll give it a name, description, and helpful icon, and click Create. After the scope is created, we can use this link in the lower left of the modal to continue our work in Studio. Let's click Create New File and select Flow Designer, Connection and Credential Alias, and click Create. We'll give it a name and click Submit. In the Connections Related list, we'll click New and give our connection a name, paste in the URL from the documentation we saw earlier, and click Submit. If this API required credentials like OAuth or an API key, we would add the credential record to this connection as well. Notice that the alias is captured in Studio as part of the app, but the connection is not. The alias will be used as part of the action we're about to build, but the connection is unique to each instance. Copying aliases is automatic. Copying connections and credentials manually is a bad practice. Create them from scratch on each instance to ensure you don't connect to the wrong system. Let's create another file. This time we'll go to Flow Designer Action. We'll give it a name. As we create actions, consider the naming carefully. Take a look at other actions in other spokes. Notice they're all short but descriptive. They generally start with a verb like get, send, post, update, or delete. We can use the description field for more verbose information about our action as needed. This form also has a category field. If we expect our spoke to have multiple actions, we can categorize them here. This provides Flow Designer easier navigation in the action menu when they access our spoke. Okay, let's click Submit. In a second or two, the action designer is presented. We won't go into every feature of the action designer, just enough to get familiar with passing information into and returning information from our custom action. We'll start by clicking Create Input. After all, we're going to need to supply an IP address. We'll call it IP Address and select the type IP Address Validated IPv4 v6 and make it mandatory. Over on the left, let's insert a new action step into the action outline. Scrolling down, we'll select REST under Integrations. If this isn't in our list of steps, it indicates we don't have the proper plugins and likely incorrect licenses as well. On a personal developer instance, we can go to developer.servicenow.com and check plugins on the instance administration page. On our organization's instances, we'll need to contact customer support. Now, when we click the REST step, we get an easy to fill out form. Let's go through it together. First, we make sure the connection field says use connection alias. If this was set to define connection inline, it would be hard coded the same for every instance and we wouldn't need the alias. For a public API like the one we're using here, that might work. But when dev, test, and prod instances are involved and credentials are added, then aliases are really the way to go. We're doing it here to demonstrate what's available when we use an alias. And notice when we pick our alias, the base URL is automatically used from the associated connection. Let's move on. In the request details, we're going to build the request manually. The other option is to import an open API specification. Now, open API is a wonderful time saver when we can find one for our service provider. Some service providers make YAML files available that can be imported into ServiceNow and take care of defining all the details of multiple REST methods in a single import. In the interest of demonstration and learning, and the fact that 
ip-api.com doesn't have a published OpenAPI spec, we'll do this one manually. For more information about OpenAPI, check out swagger.io or click the link in the description below. Now, according to the docs, we're going to use slash JSON as the resource path and additionally add our IP address input data pill to the path. There, that looks like what the docs are asking for. The HTTP method is get, and for fun, let's add a query parameter from the docs. We'll add lang with the value of en. We'll also add the accept header for good practice, even though the resource path defines the response format. Time to save our action since we've done a bit of work. Next, we'll add another step after our rest step. This time, we'll pick JSON parser. This takes a JSON string and allows us to map it to a target object without any code. We'll use the rest step response body as our source data, and we can use the sample payload from the doc site as a template to generate the target object. When done, we'll click exit edit mode. Now to create an action output. We'll simply call this answer and define it as an object. We'll assign the JSON step output to the action output by dragging the JSON parser step root object to the action output. Let's save and test by clicking test, putting in my current IP address and click run test. And when we click this link to see the execution details, we can see the answer object has all our details. Finally, when we're satisfied with our new IP lookup action, we'll publish it. Now our Flow Designer users can choose this action like any other. Notice that the word spoke doesn't appear in the menu next to our scope name. All the Flow Designer user has to do is simply supply an address and out pops the details. They may not even know they're using an integration. Now let's say we have a form with some data and we want to use this data as input to our action. The requirement is to add a UI action form button to trigger the integration. We can use the flow API to do this, but rather than construct the script for the UI action manually, we can go to the action designer and use this menu to copy a code snippet that runs our action. The code snippet can then be pasted into the UI action script and with a few minor modifications to get the data from the current record, we're ready to go. Creating additional actions is just as easy. We can supply the inputs, call the rest step with the required resource path, query parameters, payloads, and more, and then parse the output using the JSON or XML parser. If needed, we can also add in some JavaScript with the script step. But what happens if we have a response greater than 10 megabytes that we want to retrieve? and the request may time out before we get a response, or we may overrun the system resources trying to store and manipulate that much information at one time. Well, check out our next video on data stream actions for a solution to this common situation.